Let me ask you guys a question. Are you willing to give up your constitutional rights, all the rights that we have in this country, um, rights, you know, uh, written in the Constitution, the amendments to the Constitution, uh, freedom of the press, right to bear arms, uh, all of those the, the, the things that are in the Constitution, which hopefully you're all familiar with, are being infringed upon right now. And I think it was Ronald Reagan who said that health care is how communists and socialism has been in many countries is what they've used to get their foot in the door and bring about socialism, communism, by way of a, a health crisis. You know, we have to do this because it's in the interest of the public health. And I, I got to tell you guys, before everybody freaks out and starts telling me, well, you know, it, 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 there he goes again. We are one step, one step away from socialism in the United States if we do not reverse course very quickly on the way that we're, we're, we're handling the coronavirus outbreak. And I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll, let me give you an example. When I was a kid, myself and my brother and one of my cousins, we went out uh, to do some target practicing. It was out somewhere by Nine Mile Hill, I don't remember where. And we went out there in, into a, a dirt lot right off the road that was there. And we, we, there was a hill across the road and we set up some cans against that hill and we started shooting at, the, the, at, 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 their, at those cans with the 22 rifle. We shoot the cans down, put the rifles down, go back up, set the cans up, shoot them again. And it was, it was abandoned. No one was out there. And along comes the state police. And the state police car pulls up, you know. And mind you, this is 70s, maybe 80s. I don't, I don't remember exactly when. But had to be 80s because I think my, my cousin was the only one that could drive and uh, had a license. Or you can get it at 14 in those days. So policeman shows up and he, you know, gets off his police car and, you know, we're, we're there reloading our guns and he walks over to us and says to us you know what kind of guns do you have there and we told him we told him what they were and he asked us where we were from and we told him and everything and he you know we talked about what we were shooting at he, he actually just took the gun one of our guns and, and took a couple of shots himself and you know talked to us about gun safety and everything and he said the thing is you guys got to shoot against the hill all the way over there on the other side you're gonna have to go a little further in on this dirt road because it was a paved road. He said, because this is a public road and you can't shoot across the road. That made sense. So, of course, we did that. If that happened today, if a group of young people went out today with any kind of gun, 22s, anything, and shot within earshot of anyone, the SWAT team would probably descend on them. They probably would all end up in jail. All that is illegal now. And it may have been illegal then, but it wasn't something that, that, that was, you know, they threw in jail for. That, I would love to take my kids out and target practicing like that, but you can't do that unless you go way, way out there. There's a few places you can do it, but it's still frowned upon, and you can't just go out and do it, especially not that close to the city. And I'll, I'll tell you, that, 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 that's gone, okay? I tell my kids about what it used to be like to live then and things you could do, you, you know, all the things you you know, we used to shoot fireworks off because it was legal then in the city of Albuquerque to fire aerial rockets and, and, and things of that nature, those types of fireworks off. Um, there wasn't restrictions on the types of fireworks you shot off. That's gone. It's not coming back either. It's gone. And so I tell them about that. You know, we have to go, you know, several times we've gone to other states where we've had fireworks, had a great time doing that. But those, the ability to just do that is gone. You can't just do things like that anymore with your family. And now we're seeing these, this health crisis taking other things away. That we're not going to get all of those things back. Okay, you're not going to get everything back that we give up during this public health crisis. Okay, so just I'm saying this mostly to the young people because you know I, I, I hear from a lot of them who tell me oh well hey 
it, you know, we wear masks here in, 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 to protect our, to protect other people from uh, this virus. And in Asia, they're much more sophisticated culture than ours, and they've been doing that for years. They've been doing that. We'll move there then. You know, I like to shake the hand of the people I meet. Don't want to wear, walk around looking like a uh, reject from a 1990s Street Fighter game, and that's just how I feel about it. You know, we don't need to give that up. You know, when uh, when they implemented car insurance for everyone, you know, uh, you had to you had to get man it was mandatory. This goes back a few years. You know, most of the young people won't remember this, but at one point you did not have to have mandatory. Uh, liability insurance, you know, I had to go buy a car when I was younger, uh, in my teens, you know, then that's what I had, all I had to do is purchase the car, people pay for the gas, and I drive it, keep it running, but now, you have to, if you're a young person, you have to buy insurance, and, and that insurance may cost you quite a bit, and the reason you're buying insurance isn't to protect yourself, like it used to be, that's what insurance was, it insured your protection, that if you, like if you buy life insurance, if I buy life insurance right now, I'm protecting my family if, the, if I die, okay? If I buy homeowner's insurance, I'm protecting my home if a tornado comes and sweeps it away. But I'm forced to buy insurance for my cars to protect somebody else if I didn't have insurance. See what I'm saying? In other words, liability insurance for those people who don't have insurance but hit you and that's why they, they require it. it should be the other way around you should say i'm buying insurance to protect myself so if someone hits me my insurance company pays for it because i've paid for that insurance same thing goes with these masks if you want to wear a mask to protect yourself that's your choice and you should be able to do that free country at least at the moment but if you don't want to protect yourself you don't have to wear a mask but by using the idea that you are protecting others with this mask by wearing it is a way to get you to force to wear this mask and <laughs> I'm sorry I don't buy it okay the 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 N95 masks you know they're impregnated with the, uh, some stuff that actually kills germs and doctors don't wear those masks I mean they do to keep infections from spreading to patients but they wear those masks to protect themselves as well so if everybody who wants to protect themselves protected themselves, that's all we need. And I'm, I'm just saying to you that a lot of this, they closed gun stores for this, okay? And there's lawsuits over it. You know, we have uh, in New Mexico, I mean, it's not in every state, but in New Mexico, they closed the gun stores. And that is a, the Second Amendment of the Constitution says, I have a right to keep and bear arms. Well, you circumvent that right by not allowing me to be able to buy that said firearm at a store the same way I buy food if you go to Walmart right now you know I can't just go where I want to go in that Walmart store to get things that's a, it, there's one way aisle this way and a one way aisle that way I want to well and I, I hear people say they want to keep that I can't imagine why would you want to to, to, to keep that I have enough trouble with one-way streets on the road why you want if I want to walk into Walmart, walk right to the cereal aisle, I got to go up the bread aisle first. Are you kidding? And that, you, you want that? Is that the way you want to live? You want to live in a society where you're actually like cattle, run through a, a certain direction and run down this direction, up that direction? It's ridiculous. And if you, if you, if, if this, if this country gives up their rights, you deserve it. I personally don't want to do that, but. If, as a majority, we give up our rights because of this pandemic, this virus, we deserve it. We deserve it. Our four founding fathers in this country found this country because they were being overtaxed by a tyrannical government and they didn't like it. They wanted to be free people. And as a representative republic, that's what we became. And I'll tell you young guys out there, you young folks, the same thing goes for what Ronald Reagan said at the end of the same speech I quoted earlier. He said, if you don't act now before you know it, you'll be sitting on a porch someplace telling your grandkids what it was like to be free 
in the United States of America. And it won't be just like me, oh, I can't take my kids shooting or shoot fireworks off. It's going to be, we used to be able to buy this. We used to be able to do that. We used to be able to own this. We used to be able to get paid a salary for how much we worked, not just because we were in a particular line of work. Because everybody's equal in a socialist society. If you have a carpet cleaner or a carpenter or a police officer or a fireman, a mechanic, whatever, the ones that are really good in our society get paid a little more. You know, a mechanic that's really good, more people are going to go to that mechanic. Well, in a socialist society, that mechanic can have this many customers. And over here on this side, this doctor can only practice in this area because that's where we need doctors. A doctor that does plastic surgery, probably not going to be around any longer because he makes big dollars. And that's just how it is. And, you know, you hear people say, well, there's a gap between the people that have a lot of money and the people that don't have a lot of money. In communist countries and socialist countries, the only people that live free are people that are rich. And those people that are rich are people that are politicians or hooked up with politicians. A guy um, a, a, in, in a socialist country, it's very difficult to just go start a YouTube channel playing video games and make millions of dollars like a lot of young entrepreneurs do right now. They play video games and they make a lot of money and more power to them for doing that. More power to them for making money at what they love to do. But if you, if you allow socialism to take over, you're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to do that. You, you, no one's allowed to make a bunch more money than anyone else. It, it, it isn't uh, the idea of taking people in poverty and raising them up like they like to say it is. It's really trickle up poverty. People that are making a lot of money get to make less. And that money's distributed amongst everyone. And everybody's the same. And we'll be the same. We'll be wearing our little masks. Marching through the Walmart store, buying our food items, which will all be mandated to cost a certain amount, and we'll go through our one-way streets there, and that'll be life, you know, in, in, in the United States if we don't stop now. If we don't stop it now. Um, that's my rant for the day. I hope you guys are well, and then we will see you the next time I flip out. Bye.